Schmoes here at Next Generation Liverpool to train with the baddie. We're gonna see how long we last doing some jits. Let's do this. Are you strong, you? After the body trying, you know, the squeeze and that bit. <laughs> Appreciate your time. Hey, know that chest, man. That's why he's the pro and I'm the schmo. He's getting ready for December 16th. This is the schmo with the pro. He's 20 and 3. He's 4 and 0 in the UFC. He's got three performance bonuses. He is the Cage Warriors featherweight champion once upon a time. We're here at Next Generation Liverpool. We're here with the baddie. How we doing? I'm good, lad. I'm, I'm real good. It's nice to see you again. It's been a while. It's been a while, man. You're looking svelte. You're looking like you're in shape. You're looking like you're ready to go December 16th. UFC 296 against El Kakui Tony Ferguson. Yeah, the boogeyman, lad. It's, a, it's, a, it's an honor to share the cage with him, to be honest, lad. Someone who's had a 12-fight win streak in the lightweight division. Something that'll probably never get matched again. And, um, yeah, I'm, it's an honor to get in the cage with him, lad, to be honest. Can't wait to fight. Can't wait to shut a lot of doubters up and prove all my fans right. You're looking great, man, on the match. The schmo seeing you moving, getting in the work. It's about a year since you last competed. What was the most difficult part of this journey, getting back to being right in shape, to having the right mindset, and blowing the roof off of the gap of the T-Mobile Arena? Well, lad, last time, I was, obviously after the fight, I, last time when I actually watched it back, I was disappointed with my performance, but a lot of that comes down to absolutely ruining my ankle in the first round. You know what I mean? I've had to get... I got three surgeries and one on my ankle, lad. I got inner ligament reconstruction, outer ligament reconstruction, and something done to me CFL. So, funny, lad. People just keep going on about saying it's a robbery, lad, and it was a close fight, and no one's cut me any slack over my ankle, lad. You know what I mean? The hardest thing has been recovering over this, lad, because I had to get surgery in March, and then I've only, only been back in the gym sparring for about three months, you know what I mean? Um, being away from the gym and just sitting in the house all the time was the hardest part. Sitting there with your own thoughts, lad. Um, 
you know, all the stuff that I said last July still rings true with myself. It's not just because I've got a few followers and a little bit of fame now that it doesn't go away. You know what I mean? My um, I have struggled the past year, but don't you worry. I'll be coming back in a big way in December and showing us all what you just forgot. So what do you think this fight does for the baddies legacy, man? Because everyone was talking about Jared Gordon. Maybe the rematch would be next. But you got Al Kakui, Tony Ferguson, a guy who's fought all the who's who. He's a legend in the sport. And obviously that's what you're trying to be for yourself. Yeah, of course. I've seen a lot of people talking shit about the fight, you know what I mean? It's just quite annoying, like, because... A couple of weeks ago, before this fight got announced, I was the the worst lightweight in the UFC. You know what I mean? I was I was shit. You know what I mean? I was the worst on the division. And then as soon as me versus Tony Ferguson gets called, it's like, oh, they're feeding Tony to the wolves. How can the worst in the division be a wolf? You know what I mean? Use your own logic. You gang of gobshites. You know what I mean? Everyone's trying to say that um, he's like. Tony's getting fed to the walls, but as I say, the other week I was the worst lightweight in the division. So stop contradicting yourselves and sort your facts out, you gang of bums. Yeah, man. Fuck them. Fuck them. Yeah. It's all about you. It's funny, lad, everyone's saying I'm fat and that. You know what I mean? Wait, have you been in our gym? Have you been in here watching me train? All you helmets on podcasts and fucking sitting in front of your cameras talking shite. Go and suck ass, gang of bums. He's ready to make a statement, but there's a lot to talk to about, man. There's a lot of things going on in the UFC. You see that Islam Makachev is having the rematch against Volkanovski. Charles Oliveira had to pull out. What do you make of that situation? You like that fight? Yeah, of course. The first fight they had was very close. Um, I thought Islam won myself three rounds to two, but Volk come on song in the later rounds. So it'll be nice to see a rematch, even though Volk's taking her on 10 days' notice. But what was going on in that camp in with Charles Oliveira for him to get a gash that big in his head? What went on there? <laughs> It's crazy. Crazy, though. Absolutely crazy. But what do you think Volk's going to do differently in this fight that we didn't see in the first fight? I think he'll come out faster and stronger like he did in the fifth round of the, the last fight. He'll know that he can get up when he gets taken down, so he'll be a little bit more, not reckless, but a little bit more advanced going forward on the feet. Can't think of the word, you know what I mean? He'll be a bit more attacking where in the first fight, the first couple of rounds, he sat back a bit, didn't he, worrying about the wrestling where now he knows he can get back up. So I think uh, Volk Vol will come out a bit more aggressive in this fight. Do you think Justin Gaethje's the next man in line, the BMF champion, after what he did in Salt Lake City against Dustin Poirier to face the winner of this matchup? Yeah, I think he is. I think they've already said that, to be honest. I think they've already said that Gaethje's next in line because I think he got the phone call to fight. He'd be next in line? Yeah. 100%. He's, uh, he's quality just engaged, you like. He is. He's unbelievable. Brilliant to watch, but he doesn't like me, so. What do you make of Usman stepping in, man? Kamaru Usman's fighting Hamza Chimaya. Paulo Costa had to pull out with the infection in his elbow. Yeah, the Usman's a G, man, jumping in like that. He's, uh, he's going for the legacy, isn't he? Uh, where he's lost his welterweight weight belt, he's going up, and if he beats Chimaya, he'll fight for the, uh, the middleweight belt against someone he's already beaten, Sean Strickland. So he could be a two weight, two weight champion. We'll see what happens. Conor McGregor back in the USADA pool. No more USADA with the UFC. Did you hear about that? What do you make of that news? Doesn't make a difference to me, lad. That's getting legged on the 31st of December. I'm fighting on the 16th, so I'm still in there on all the USADA shit. None of it. Can't take no notice of that till after me fight. You're still one of the most popular figures in all of mixed martial arts. Someone that is also popular, Sugar Sean O'Malley, he became the champion. A lot of people ridiculed and criticized him on his come up, but it doesn't make a difference because he shuts them all up. Are you going to have a very similar type of situation when you have the gold belt around your waist and the lightweight division? I fucking hope so. You know what I mean? I want to be the champ, lad, of course. It goes without saying, but can't get ahead of myself, especially after my last performance. All, all I'm thinking about now is coming out and finishing Tony Ferguson in the first round. You know what I mean? Make his statements, let everyone know what they were missing, and then I'll start looking at ranked opponents in the new year. Someone who's clearly not a ranked opponent, someone who's clearly not in the UFC, Logan Paul. He's fighting Dylan Dennis. It's over there in Manchester. You got KSI and Tommy Fury. Logan Paul's been brash, calling out to you to a mixed martial arts fight. What do you make of this whole situation, the circus show over there with the misfits? I'll be honest, I didn't even know that was in Manchester, you know, until yesterday. Someone said it was in Manchester. I was wondering why there was all journalists in Manchester, all MMA reporters. I think that was a mad one, that. Didn't even know where that fight was, but yeah. Fuck the poor brothers, lad. Gang of gobshites. Kind of be arse talking about them, you know what I mean? They both know that I'll snap their arm or their leg for them if they ever want to have a real fight. End of. You're dialed in right now. I can see it. The hair flow is looking good. You're feeling like you're ready to go. I am not, as I say, I've got a statement to make. It's been a while since um, 
I've had so long out the cage, I don't know, I've had, by the time I fight, I'll have had over a year out of the cage and the amount, the amount of training I've done to get better and I'm just a different fighter, you know what I mean, it's going to be the baddie 2.0, a new mythical fight is going to get unlocked. Certainly looks like that. The schmo knows that you're clearly in shape, you didn't reward yourself, would you reward yourself after having the hand raised December 16th with a lot of great Vegas food? Yeah, of course, but... I've said I've said it before. After the fight, it's hard work to not eat anything you want. You know what I mean? You have a little bit of an eating disorder after the fight, but as I say, I reckon the reason I'm so skinny this time is because it's been so long since I've had a camp. But from now on, I am gonna try and keep my weight a bit low. Because at the minute now, I haven't even started the diet yet. You know what I mean? I'm still eating what I want. I'm just not pigging out like a fat bastard like I usually do. So as I say, I'm walking around about 183, 182, and. I had, a, I had a carbonara and a, tie, and a maize tie yesterday, lad, so I'm eating well. He's eating well, wearing it well. Can we get a final message for all the baddie fans out there worldwide? Everyone who's a fan and supporting, I love yous all. All you little wrongins who turned your back on me, go and eat shit. Don't jump back on the bandwagon, yeah? Suck eggs. All the real fans, I love yous, and we're coming December 16th to take over. The baddie army's back in Vegas, watch. A man on the mission. He's the pro. I'm the schmo. Liverpool. We're out.